Hello, my name is Jujun, and welcome back to Armored Warfare. Today, I'm going to be bringing you up to speed with update 015, all the changes and additions that you need to know. I'm going to be missing out some of the patch notes, of course. You can read them for yourselves. I'll leave them uh, a link to them down below. But I won't be reading all of them, as it will take far too long, and you'll probably have better things to do. Regardless, the main thrust of this update for a lot of you will be the tier 10 additions. There are six tier 10 vehicles that you can go and research and purchase. The T-14 Armata, the PL-01, the Leopard 2A7140, the Sphinx, the XM-1A3, and the Challenger 2 ATDU. Four main battle tanks, a light tank, and an armoured fighting vehicle. One of these vehicles will cost you 22,950,000, which is an expensive piece of kit to buy, well, in the game. And the retrofits will cost you up to 7.1 million for tier 3 retrofits. Not all of the tier 3s will cost that, but a lot of them do, especially a lot of the firepower ones. Anyway, let's move on to the other changes. Another addition into the game in patch 015 is the Macarver 2B Premium MBT. I do have the vehicle, I will be playing it, I will be giving you my opinions of it when I have the time, and my very first game is mixed, is all I can say. There are two new PvE maps added to Armored Warfare, Prometheus and Meltdown, which of course is nice to see as more additions to player versus environment will add longevity to that game mode. The garage has also had changes in terms of its UI. Some of these changes are nice and the feel of the garage is quite good, but others are quite annoying. The consumables and ammunition and things like that at the bottom. Sometimes the symbols pulsate in a weird manner and it's just kind of a bit strange how they've decided to add that. But yep, that's changed as well. Certain vehicle types have changed in the game. Light tanks have had their ECU override or their speed boost cooldown reduced from 60 to 45 seconds, as well as the duration being increased to 8. Light tanks no longer lose any speed while they are turning when the ability is active. AFEs have also had their health buffed at higher tiers, tiers 7 to 10, because of the high tier MBT damage and penetration and they were being killed too quickly. The Abbot has also been changed, the tier 3 has been removed and bumped up to tier 4 and then another Abbot has been added back into tier 3. So in the game we now have the Abbot Mark 1 and the Abbot Mark 2. So if you already had the Abbot at tier 3, you'll have it at tier 4, as well as this new tier 3 one, so you have two new artillery. Active protection systems have also been changed. With regards to soft kill APS, the charges have been reduced from 4 to 3, and the cooldown between each of those APS charges has been increased from 25 seconds to 30 seconds. Hard kill has also had some nerfs, unlimited charges are now gone, and have been reduced to a maximum of 6. The cooldown has also been increased from 45 seconds to 60 seconds, and when the APS is damaged, it now has a plus 50% modifier as opposed to a plus 20% modifier for the reload time. Another change is that the sim base matchmaking or skill influence matchmaker has been disabled. I now move on to the various vehicle buffs and nerfs. Some vehicles have only had one parameter change, such as gun depression, so those have all been grouped via that statistic, whereas others, such as much of the higher tier Leopard line, have had multiple parameters changed. So, I've grouped those in their own special listings. Looking at the higher tier Leopards, from the Leopard 2 up to the Leopard 2A6, so for tiers 7 through 9, we see some buffs to ATGM reload times and gun depression. However, the Leopard 2A5 and the 2A6 now have two new weak spots in the lower left hand side of the turret. As you face them, as if you're fighting them, 
and if you were playing one of these vehicles it would be in the, your lower right hand side of your turret. Here we see the vehicles affected by the ATGM changes, some have had buffs, some have had nerfs, MBT-70 has had a nerf, the Starship has had a nerf, as well as the standard missiles on the Type 98. Everything else you see has had a buff. Alongside this we have a host of depression and elevation changes. Everything that you see has been buffed with the exception of the Leopard 1A5's elevation over the rear which has been reduced by 1 degree from 2. Many AFEs have had their hit points increased, mostly by around 100 to 200, some of them are less, some of them are more, but this should help you AFE drivers at the higher tiers. The tier 9 Challenger 2 has had its nominal thickness improved from 320 to 420 mm. Its front and side gun depression has also been improved to minus 10, whereas its elevation over the rear has been reduced by half a degree. The Ramka 99 has had more HP added compared to the other armoured flying vehicles and has gone from 1495 up to 1935. And additionally, the M1134 has had 20 more missiles added to its ammo capacity, increasing it from 30 to 50 missiles. This will hopefully, according to the developers, prevent problems with it running out in PvE. And so there you go, that's everything you need to know about patch 015. There was one other thing that I noticed when I was in game looking at the retrofits however, it's not in the game yet, but there is a hint to the return of the Centauro 155. If you take a look at the retrofits and specifically the firepower retrofits and then look at the advanced thermal sleeve, currently you can only have the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. The Mark 2 is unlocked via the B1, Centauro B1, but it says the Mark 3 will be unlocked via the Centauro 155 mod. So there you go. When will it return? I don't know, but it is interesting to see that it is in the game. Well, its text is anyway. Not sure if that's supposed to be there or if that's just a little bit of a hint, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to leave it a like down below, possibly share the video with your friends. And as always, I've been Jujin, and I'll see you chaps and chapettes in the next one.